Hey everyone, it's Frodio here with an attempt at a achievement. And I was not sure which one to do because I've been waiting for the new expansion to come out for a while now. Cradle of Civilization. And I've been looking through the achievements. And one that particularly caught my eye as being pretty or substantially easy, you'd assume, is uh, the one to form Imreti as Georgia. Can't really remember the name of the achievement right now, but it's got something to do with St. George, I'm pretty sure. You'll see in the title. I hope so. Guess we should just jump right into this. Yes, uh, I'll just name this Georgia, because what better name? And this is my first attempt at uh, actually recording a U4 campaign, so we'll see how it goes, hopefully well. And right now we can see this new feature from the new expansion. Shows a bit of stuff about your country that you can read. <coughs> so right now I'm just gonna not read it because it's nothing interesting. For, so for bigger countries you'd have something more interesting, but for small ones like the one we're playing right now, You'd assume there won't be too much information, but all you have to know is that Georgia is in a dire situation, as it says here. So you've also got a couple other screens that you can probably figure out for yourself what they are. And down here it says all the DLCs that you have enabled. So currently I don't have Conquest of Paradise, the Cossacks or Third Rome, but I don't think any of those will make a really big impact, except for the Cossacks maybe, but I don't really like the states as much. So let's just jump right into this. So we see right now we're at 1444 and we got to set our rivals. That's the thing I usually do immediately. Oh, Crimea. I'm not sure how well that's going to end up. But yes, I guess we'll just select the same people who rivaled us. I don't want to make anyone else hate me. Though I kinda wanna keep Genoa sorta of friendly, so I'm gonna rival s this guy, Samtske. Hopefully, I didn't butcher that too awfully. So, right now, what we got is level 1 fort in the mountains. That is gonna be good. But they do have two of those in Georgia. So, there is actual Georgia existing in. 1444 so we would have to do delete them from the map and then form Georgia ourselves so for that we require four provinces that we currently do not own so these are the two owned by this guy here and two of Georgia's provinces so these two the ones further away from us unfortunately but it would hopefully be a full annexation if we would actually end up winning the war Maybe this is going to be total fail of a campaign, but uh, yeah, suppose we'll we got four transports which I don't think we will ever need. So instead, I will save some money and send these guys to protect trade in Crimea and mothball the galleys, which we would probably need later. Looking at the missions, we probably want to take this one because that's one of the provinces we require. But yeah, so I for some reason I saw that by default Georgia guarantees the independence of this guy. But apparently they don't. Maybe it was my mistake. So hmm this could be a tasty alliance, but they have a lot of big rivals, so I might not take it yet. I'll look around for some allies. You could do Trebizond because five K as little as that is, it's better than no ally, in my opinion. So we will probably ally them. And you can see our force limit right now is 8. So I'm going to build two more infantry. And I think I'm not going to take any advisors for now because we can't really afford it. Though it would be pretty nice if we could. Oh, and yeah. Uh, we don't have an heir, so let's hope this guy doesn't die. 
Or he gets an heir pretty soon. Oh, he's a really good king. 3-4-3 three, three as a starter is pretty, pretty good. Oh, so this is now different. This is this isn't, didn't used to be gray before. I like that. So yeah, other new features in this DLC are professionalism, which I think is free with the patch. Don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure it is. And also they have the same ideas as Georgia. Which I mean I'm a fan of chance of new air if we could get it immediately, but I guess we'll have to wait on that. Now of these I'm sure I only like manpower recovery speed oh and the monthly war exhaustion would be really nice. As well as the infantry combat ability. Nothing else seems super special right now. But yeah, I wanted to check out the trading mechanics right here. So we would need to have a merchant there, and we currently have two, so I'm going to place one there. And currently we don't have any trade power anywhere else, so we'll have to hold on to our second merchant. So assuming I'm going to unpause right now, I wanted to look if we can actually improve or, or find an alliance with someone. Could be only Trebizond or Sukasi right now. So I guess we will hold off on that. Support, mm, not gonna support their independence, but uh, I guess we'll just improve relations with threatening and uh, neighboring countries. It's for a good measure. And lots of things we'll calculate now as it's the start of the game. But supposedly we're gonna be spying on. Georgia and since this diplomat is not doing anything we'll just keep him here and I guess improve with Trebizond but we do have a lot of allies that, that is probably good but oh Theodoro has got a new icon I'm pretty sure yeah oh, that one looks pretty cool I almost mistook that for Odoyev but now that I look at it, it's not really that similar. So ours is sort of a deer or some sort of a another animal, probably deer, with just little. I don't know. I'm really bothering looking at these details, but might as well check this out. So currently, you can choose one of four policies because we are not Muslim, but. We can establish communities to take improved relations. Uh, hostile trading would be spy network. That would be good against Georgia. And maximize profit. I don't know. We need we need this one really. I will probably take spy network construction now. Can't select a new policy for about 12 months, but I guess it's okay for now. I haven't thinking we should probably ally someone else or at least royal marry them so we have a higher chance of uh, they don't like us anymore too bad we really don't have any other shot at allies right now except Theodoro but I'm only going to improve with them when I can and maybe take a royal marriage for that higher chance of new air suppose it's really low right now where is it? New air. Can't seem to find it. Oh. I'll look at that in a second. I just want to find this air thing, but it won't appear for some reason. Apparently, it is not a thing. Hmm. Well. I oh, guess I'll go look at it another time, but let's see. So this event is profiteering in Zugdidi. Citizens of Zugdidi have grown tired of the local influence of greedy Odoyevan merchants that they claim are using unfair advantages to outcompete local businesses. So that city is somewhere, not really in our territory it seems. But uh, 
our choices are either Odoyev hates us and we get local unlist minus two in Odishi plus twenty five percent trade power and that so I guess we'll take the first one because we don't really care what Odoyev thinks right now probably a good idea but yeah we'll probably be declaring war on this guy first I mean the sooner we do that the better so nobody else does that before us so maybe I will do that right now since it is our mission but this is 8 development so I might want to get a claim on it before we do declare war so I'm gonna turn up the speed a bit See if this goes a bit faster. Oh, Ottomans want military access. Sure, it will be a big pain in the ass later. But right now, I suppose we will let you freely roam through our lands. Just waiting for this claim. I know it could be pretty boring. But yeah, let's look at the map while this just goes on. So we can't really see most of the Middle East, but. What I can see right now is the Mamluks' territories have been changed quite a bit. So have the countries on the Arabian Peninsula. So Medina is a new nation which controls the holy city of Medina. And Hejaz has Mecca. So I guess whoever gets those two will be really praised in the Islamic world. So we'll take the one claim we can on Georgia. And then I suppose we should improve with uh, Theodoro so we can get a royal marriage with them. If we can, just to increase those chances of actually getting an heir, because this current situation is not too good. I mean, he doesn't have any negative modifiers towards getting an heir, so I'm assuming this is still the regular chances. Oh, there it is. I somehow totally missed that, but yeah. Plus 5% is not the greatest. I'm not too keen on that, but there go the Ottomans. I'm glad they're not going after me. For one. We're almost there with the spy network, I suppose. Oh, and before I forget, I'm going to embargo my rivals currently. So we get some more power projection, which is a good thing to have. I think it's not good to have Crimea's arrival since they're allied to the Ottomans. But I really can't have known that early on. And we should probably roll a general for when we go into this war. That's pretty good for 10 tradition. Got a couple of good pips on siege pretty balanced overall. Let's see, they have five troops in the mountains. I am probably going to call in Trebizond and immediately go in for the fort. Or maybe gather up our troops with theirs. We will see how it works out. I just need to wait two or three more months it seems. Two by the looks of it. Just drinking some refreshing tea after this whole day of studying slash nothingness. It was a pretty long day. I'm glad to be here finally playing with the new DLC since it's been that long between this one and the previous one. So, I guess we're taking this claim and we will declare war call in Trebizond and I will see just which one has hard or apparently they have the same development so I will take this one as Casus Belli so it's cheaper because you know it's a capital and probably costs more to to core and let's wait for them to stack up on us uh, make sure to allow troops to attach but I, there you go I've changed that to 
But yeah, I guess we could attack them in the mountains because we have a pretty substantial advantage in the numbers. And it looks like despite some really poor rolls, we have uh, emerged victorious. And by the looks of it, this is a level 3 fort, so we will need all the troops that we can get guessing without this cavalry so we don't suffer excessive attrition plus Trebizond is attached to us so we could even remove one more unit just minimize the attrition and we'll turn up the speed just now let me just see where my loot thing was right there I have changed my buttons a couple of times in the recent past so I'm still getting used to them not sure if they are if they are all ideal but I think this one fits me pretty well Should probably keep unrest out instead of anything else so currently we are making oh no what else? When everything's going well, a comet will fall. Just clicking a random one, and I guess we'll boost stability since Orthodox actually gives a bonus to that, so we don't have to pay extra. Minus 10% is pretty good. I'm assuming that uh, I will end this video once this uh, war is over. I'm not really. Ooh, that is good. So currently, I'm not sure whether army professionalism is better or army tradition losing 10 army tradition seems pretty bad though yeah this is 40 percent up here so we're nowhere near that I guess I'll just take the tradition for now just to get some more morale and siege ability oh, well apparently siege ability only comes from professionalism so that was kind of pointless so Trebizond will offer us admin power, hopefully. If they are nice enough. If not, then screw them. Oh, there you go. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Trebizond, I didn't mean to insult you. There you go, that's... Ooh. Good thing we were at war right now, dude. If this had happened while we were at peace. I don't think we got on air, did we? I can't remember, but if we weren't at war, it would have probably meant that we would be at a personal union right now under one of these guys. Once again, boost the stability. I know, total waste of admin power, but I would rather have positive stability than... or zero than negative. You know what I mean. So we're almost done with this siege. 42, there you go. So let's see how much AE and all that sort of stuff. 22, barely anything. Though I don't like the admin situation. Mm, I don't know. We will probably hold on to this, see how much loot we can get. Attach these guys so we don't take any attrition in the mountains. And we will finish looting this province while we're gathering some admin power so. Uh, that means we can transfer trade power there now. Good. But yeah. I guess we'll do this one. Can we not? Merchant is working tirelessly. I can tell, but I don't think we can actually select a trade policy right now, unfortunately. Let us just wait for the looting to go. And it is gone. I guess we'll just piece them out right now take all their money suppose that's it <coughs> excuse me will not result in any aggressive expansion make sure those provinces are occupied by us and piece them out and another personal new threat but hopefully we can 
Okay, hopefully we can do this mission, but yeah, hopefully we don't die. So we can continue this for more than one episode. Local unrest plus five in the Emirati area, or plus eight. Currently can't afford this, can we? Can in most provinces, but I don't really want to. Get bonus rebels. Hmm, it's not cool. Already dislike these new events. But we will call apparently the same price for both provinces, even though. Even though they are. One of them was a capital and the war goal. Sometimes I just don't understand. There you go. We got our heir, but the queen, oh my god. This is insane. Okay, now I feel like we need to die soon. <laughs> because if we do, might as well set us as a leader and try to put down the rebels like that. So yeah, we'll just wait until we can core this province. And I guess we've hit the 20 minute mark. Even a bit past that. Unfortunately, I'm recording using this Radeon software. I might change that in the future, but for now we are sticking to this. And by the looks of it, we can't really remove this icon up there in the timer. Well, that's pretty helpful. But for now, we'll end it here. Imereti has taken over this guy. Force limit has grown substantially by one. Almost unbelievable. And hopefully next episode, if it does actually get made, we will attack Georgia and take the remaining two provinces. Probably we don't even need to take this one. And form Georgia ourselves. Yeah, this will be the longest campaign in history of a whole two episodes. Thank you very much for watching, and I will hopefully see you next time. Good, goodbye.